Hey, thanks for joining us. This is Charlie Lofton, the lead pastor at the Grove Church, and I'm here with Mark Freeman, executive pastor at the Grove Church. How you doing, man? Man, it is good. Good, all's good. It is good. It is good. Man, good so weekend. Good weekend. Long weekend. Good Tuesday. Nice. And um, it's good to have you here with us. Um, we've been doing this podcast for a little bit, and I've got you here. I'm kind of exploring the idea of discipleship. And I think about this word, discipleship, disciple, and lots of times when I'm trying to define a word, I try to think of like other contexts other than Bible land in which we use the word disciple. And um, honestly, bro, I don't know if I can come up with many. Do you know that, like, for, for this word? Yeah, well, people, you, well, people, like it's not in a church context and they say, man, that I think that guy is a disciple. Yeah, I mean, I've heard it when you talk about like... Um, maybe a professor or somebody who's good at something in particular. And they would say, so-and-so is a disciple of this person. I mean, I've heard that used before. I was really hoping you were going to go martial arts at that point, honestly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so disciple just having to do with like, yeah, yeah that's a good example. Yeah. This, this is, this is my, this is the teacher that I'm a learner. Mm -hmm. All right. So how would you define disciples? I mean, just take, take it all, whether in a Bible context or, any context, like, so I say, like, I want to understand what this word is. What is, what is a disciple? Yeah. I mean, when I, when I think about that, that somebody would be a disciple of someone else. I mean, at the core of that word, you've got discipline that somehow life has been disciplined around um, a certain set of beliefs or actions or so if, you know, if there's some teacher in or martial arts, that's a great man. If I'm a Bruce Lee disciple, mm. then, you know, they're, things about him that you will encounter me and see similar things in the way that I do it because I have disciplined myself around his way. So I think that that's true in a Christian context or non-Christian context, secular context, whatever. So it has, it has to do with me in some way looking, acting, thinking like another person. So in a, the one, yeah. In a teaching context, it may be, may be more belief oriented. In martial arts or some activity, it may be like some sort of sport. It would be a he swings the same way, he shoots the same way, mm -hmm. he coaches the same way. So there's just a similarity. So a disciple is the learner, is the protege, mm -hmm. and he has someone that he is imitating, copying, growing, coming to be like. Right. And someone who really has become a disciple, you know, it's almost... Or if you're with one or with the other, you feel like you're with the same person mm. because they've mimicked the other so much that they've, you know, become a clone, I guess, you know. And so let's let's switch it to the to the Bible Christian context. And now you can give me a more churchy definition of sorts, if you would like, or churchy. And like when a church says that we're making disciples or somebody says we want to be a disciple, or I am a disciple of Christ. What does that mean? What is what is what does a disciple mean in a Christian context? Yeah, no, that's a great question, man. But I I think it's when we go to the Christian context, this is just one of those words that's been so overused that it it gets really sticky because some people do when they say this word, they're specifically referring to the relationship between two believers, where one more mature believer is helping a, a younger believer grow. Um, and sometimes I think that even gets confused as if the, the one that you're becoming like is the, the more mature believer, but actually in, in the Christian context, the idea of discipleship is that Jesus is the one that we're following. And so we're disciplining our lives around who he is and his way. And it involves someone helping us a lot of the times, but that discipleship is, right. Um, that we're, we're becoming more and more and more like Christ. So um, whether that includes somebody helping us or not, I think. Yeah, so I, get, I think I, I would definitely would agree with that. So when ministries or churches that talk about making disciples or b discipleship, they're talking about one person mentoring another person, and that's discipleship. Mm -hmm. But really, when Jesus uses the word disciple and he talks about discipling, it is something that I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to be a disciple. I am supposed to make disciples, but the teacher is Jesus mm -hmm. and the learner is really, is really all of us, which will get us to a question that we will, we will cover in, an, in another episode where we will talk about 
the potential necessity or importance of having a mentor. But when we think about discipleship and what it means to be a disciple, we are talking about being a disciple of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Not to be confused with disciple of Christ, which is a, that's a denomination. But Mm. anyway, that is what we're talking about, which is where where the nomination comes from. They're trying to say, hey, we are people who pattern our lives after Jesus. And so if you think about, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to live a life that is patterned after Jesus. I mean, <laughs> I mean, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot of things in my life right now that would just really essentially make that impossible. Mm-hmm. I chose to get married. I've got kids. It's 2000 years later. I live in a completely different modern context in a completely different culture. And I, and I, and I think sometimes we think we be like Jesus and, and we just imagine, you know, this kind of this roaming guy in the desert who kind of lived this, you know, very impoverished kind of monastic, which means like a monk, like this kind of lifestyle. And you think I got to be like Jesus. That can feel intimidating. Mm. What do you think, if if Jesus were here, that's no pressure on this question. (laughs) Mark, I would like for you to give the answer that Jesus would give. Mm -hmm. What what does it mean to be a, a learner, a disciple of Jesus? I want to be like Jesus. Yeah, I mean, while it is a stretch for us to think what his life uh, was like, and to uh, you know, you know, transfer that over into what what it looks like for us, the gospels really do give a lot of that picture. I mean, and uh, you know, Jesus was God in the flesh, giving us this example of what it looks like. Scriptures tell us that you know he understands what it's like to be in our shoes. He was he was on the planet. Um, and the gospels from these four different perspectives do give us a kind of color commentary on his life. Um, what he cared about, what he got mad about, how he responded to people. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a stretch, but at the same time, there's, there's a good uh, kind of roadmap for us there. I think. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think, I think character is really one of the first things that jumps out of my mind and, and mm-hmm. character, character is applied in a whole lot of different particular context as far as kind of who you are and where you live and, you know, your environment. But I mean, the character of Jesus, and like you said, the way that he interacts with people. But I think it's also important. I mean, like he, he was a teacher. He had a lot of things to teach about who God is, about who you are with respect to God, how one comes to have a relationship with God. And so I think I think there is a strong belief component to that too. If 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 this is who Jesus says that God is, I believe that. If this is what um this is what he says he says I am and how I have a relationship with God, you know, this is what what I believe. And I think I would also add the the moral component to it. I mean there's things that Jesus said you should do, you must do, you shouldn't do, you can't do. I mean, there's, there, are, mm-hmm. there are, there, there's a moral, there, there's a component, there's, there's a, there's obedience. And sometimes I think that we, maybe we shy away from that word a little bit, obedience, but I mean, what, how, you feel like there's an obedience component to being a disciple of Jesus? Yeah. I mean, I think uh, it's so much at the core of it because, you know, in the great commission where Jesus talking to his disciples. He says, all authority has been given to me in in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. And then when he describes what discipleship is, making these disciples, he says, you know, it's baptizing them and teaching them to obey. Mm. So it it very much is at the core. What does it look like to obey, to orient your life around those things that Jesus taught and the model that he gave us? Yeah, I mean, the, the passage that, Mark, you just referenced is in Matthew 28. It's the very end. And I love the setup here for this passage because Jesus already died. He's come back to life. And he's been hanging out with his disciples for a few days. And essentially, he's gathering them together one last time. So this is kind of a, um, I got one more thing to tell you before I'm, ha- before I'm out of here for good. And it, one of the ways I think about it is, you know, for, for three plus years, they, these guys were followers of Jesus in the most literal sense of the word. Jesus was in Nazareth, and then he went to Gethsemane, and now, now he's now he's there. I'm going to follow him. And Jesus on this side of the lake, he gets in the boat. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get in the boat. I'm like a literal following of Jesus. But what does it mean to follow Jesus when you can't literally see him anymore? And so he gathers them together essentially for what I would just kind of call like a um, a passing of the baton moment. 
Matthew 28, verse 16, Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. So that's real interesting. Mm -hmm. What are they doubting there? And just like what you just said, they were following, literally following. They had seen these works. They had been around and there were still some in the crowd that doubted. (laughs) (laughs) I would imagine being just a little bit terrified. Oh my goodness. I mean, and, and, and you think, you think, man, if I saw Jesus, then I'd be, I'd be totally cool. But if you saw somebody die and get buried and you saw them, I don't care how many times you're like your heart and brain is going to have a hard time processing that. Mm. So some of them were very quick to worship. And then some of them, I I still know, I I think we give way too much credit to the advantage that they have for being able to see it. I'd be probably terrifying. Mm. Okay. So anyways, then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the Holy spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So we got a, we got, we got a setup here. So the first thing that Jesus says is all authority in heaven on earth has been given to me. Why do you think he leads with that? I think it, it has a lot to do with the command that he's about to give. I, I have the authority to, to say this. I am, I am, I am king. Um, your obedience is something that I'm not, you know, begging for. It is, it is the just and right thing to do because I am the one on heaven and on earth that has the chops to say something like this. Yeah, I, th- I think we as a church at the Grove, where Mark and I are both on staff, I think we do. As you know, props here. I think we do a good job of really teaching that God is full of grace, that He loves us, He embraces us, even and our sin sacrifices son and that it's completely and totally free and that obedient, you don't have to do things to earn God's favor. But at the same time, all authority has been given to him. And so we can talk, we'll talk a little bit about that later in another episode, just kind of the balance between, between that. But at this point, I think it's important for us because it's what Jesus says. Whatever comes out of my mouth next, the one that you just saw walk out of a grave Whatever you hear me say next, be assured that no matter where you go in heaven on earth, I have the authority to say this. Mm. He doesn't, he doesn't, we, like, I would, we don't typically think of Jesus as using that card, but um, he had it in his pocket. That's right. Did Jesus, they have pockets? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyways. You know, that's a, that is a great question. That's another, another episode. Another right episode. There. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. So he has all the authority. Now, therefore, go make disciples. Which again, we've been trying to define and kind of give some of this point. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, which implies kind of a, a transformational acceptance of the gospel. Right. There's, you, you cannot be someone who just models his character and believes some of his things. I mean, it is a, a full embrace of the gospel. Mm-hmm. And like what you just said, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. Teaching them to obey what? Everything. 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 And so there's a sense in which a de- we've got a, we got a fairly clear definition of what Jesus means by making or being a disciple. That I have... I've been baptized. I've been transformed. I've been made new. I've been washed. Pick your pick your metaphor, but essentially the gospel that I know that Jesus Christ died on the cross for me as the payment for my sins, and I've given my life fully to God through Jesus. And now I want to obey everything that I've commanded you. Mm-hmm. So, so this is a maybe a challenging question. So, if a disciple then is someone who has been transformed by the gospel and obeys everything that Jesus Teaches. You can ask me if I'm a disciple. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask if you think I'm a disciple. Uh, who, 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 is? who is a disciple? Mm, that's a great question. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that there, you know, the way that you describe baptism right there, I think is, is real critical that there's a turning point. There's, there's a turning point. Um, you know, the picture of baptism that I was, um, you know, in this life and I was dead and then now I'm, there's this new life. There's this new life in me and I've got a new path. And this new path includes, you know, orienting my life around these commands of Jesus, um, 
teaching them to obey doesn't mean that they're always, you know, going to be right in step with that. But they have, they're all, they are on a new path. You, you, you are on right. a new path, right? right? The Charlie before that and the Charlie after that were headed two different directions. Yeah. So I'm going to make disciples. I'm going to, I'm, I'm, I'm going to teach people to obey. So then as then being a disciple is me obeying, is there a spectrum then? Like I'm mm. like, like I'm a, I'm a disciple when I'm, when I'm trying, like when I recognize that it's more than the gospel. And so now I'm, 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 I'm in pursuit. And so I'm an immature disciple. It's like, is there a spectrum here? Is it because we, we talk about salvation as a on off thing. You either are Step or are life. not. Mm-hmm. You, you move from one to the other. Is, is discipleship different or is there's like, is there come a moment where I can be like, now I am a disciple. Boop, boop. You know, I think when I think about that, there's a, uh, there's a point in which you know these commands, you, you, you're, you're aware of them and have a good picture of what it looks like to follow them. Not talking about whether you actually do or not, but just that, that you do, you, you know them and um, you practically have some sort of outworking of what that would look like. And you've started to do that. Yeah, you know, the first step for me, I think, um, in my, my personal journey was just even really knowing what that, those commands were. You know, I had a general idea of that from church background and things that I'd heard, but really um, looking at my life up against the the commands and the model of Jesus, it was just something I'd never done before. Yeah, there's a verse um, that we're going to spend some time in a series at the church kind of talking about. Um, John 14, 21, whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my father and I too will love them and show myself to them. And so Jesus makes the, makes a pretty direct connection there between obedience and love of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I really do. I think, I think you're right. I think that is the first step for someone to be a disciple is just a recognition of that, that it is not it's not just simply that I, I believe, but I recognize then because I've given my life to him and I want to love him, I want to follow him, that obedience is essential. And so then a disciple is someone who understands that, is learning to understand. It's like, well, I guess if it's about obeying Jesus' commands, I better figure out what these commands are. And then once I know them, living a life of trying to follow them. Mm-hmm. And my discipleship, whether or not I'm a disciple then, ultimately is based around both my knowledge and application of, of the commands of Jesus. Mm. You know, something else about that, uh, about that verse um, in Matthew, it, he says, uh, go and make disciples and teach them to obey. So there's the commands, but there's also just this learning of how, how, how do I obey the practice of obedience? Um, which is one of the things, you know, the more that we talk about mentorship and someone helping us, there's this, this practical outworking of how do I just, how do I take those things and put them into practice and that transference and not just walking into a church building and learning more commands, Mm. stacking up my knowledge, but then learning how to take those things and practice them. There's an art there, you know? And I love the way the passage ends with, and I'm with you always to the very end of the age that. It's heavy. That's a heavy thing. Uh, you need to obey everything, but the presence of the powerful God of the universe, Jesus Christ, will be with us mm-hmm. always. So even if you feel a little overwhelmed, I mean, Jesus is right there with you. Well, Mark and I, we've got a lot more to say about um, discipleship, so I encourage you to keep uh, listening to these podcasts and really glad that you have joined us today. Mark, thanks for being here. Oh, yeah, thanks for having me. And I um, encourage you to check us out sometime at thegrovechurch.org. You can visit us sometime on a Sunday morning or check us out online. And we would love to be with you. So thanks again for being here.